Hello, my name is Gina DeFord. I am so excited to go live with you today. So I'm the founder of Babe Crafted. I'm going live today with Denise Alexander. She is a fantastic coach. We're gonna be talking about how to feel empowered after divorce. So we have some questions we're gonna go over together and we wanna hear from y'all as well. The more we can customize our conversation for you, the better. So please don't be shy about sharing an intro in the chat and asking any questions. for you to meet her. She is phenomenal. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I hope everyone's having a fantastic week so far. There she is. Hi. How are you? Hello. Doing awesome. I'm good. How are you? Even better now that you're here. Yeah, thanks for having Absolutely. me on. I'm excited about okay, this. I'm just turning my volume up here so I can hear you better. So first question is, Tell us a little bit about yourself. So who are you? Tell us about your the type of coaching that you specialize in and how you got into it. Okay, yeah, so I'm Denise. I'm a relationship and divorce coach and I help women move through and on from their breakup or divorce without shame, without guilt. So that's something I specialize in. I became a certified life coach in 2019 when I was going through my own divorce. And I knew pretty early on that I wanted to work with women who were going through a similar experience because I found value in the way I navigated my own divorce and co-parenting journey with grace and dignity. That is phenomenal. So, yeah. I mean, shout out to your journey. Shout out to the, the women that you help to reach a point where you are today, where you are you know, the happy and whole person that you deserve to be and having a really successful co-parenting situation between you and your former spouse. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there are so many different directions we could take this conversation. And of course, you know, we only have so much time. So we have some questions that are, you know, have been pre-selected in advance. But if anyone has any questions afterwards, please don't be shy about hitting up Denise and her DMs. Um, so our next question, is, so what are some common feelings and experiences, you know, a woman has when going through a divorce? So most of the women I work with are experiencing feelings of abandonment, rejection, hopelessness, and especially the fear of the unknown. I would say the fear of the unknown is probably the major one, whether the woman is deciding whether to stay or leave the relationship or whether she has already started the process. So worries about finances, how the children will cope, starting over after a long-term marriage are often what holds them back from moving Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. I love that you said fear of the unknown. I mean, you know, when something is a question mark, that's extremely intimidating, you know? And when the relationship that, you know, yeah. is the most important relationship in your life, when that starts to shift and it's not, you know, what you're used to it being, I mean, you're just on such unsteady ground. So... Um, but there are really fantastic resources and support out there. So, okay, Denise, this question is not on the list, but I want to bust a myth with you. So this idea of staying together okay. for the kids, can you talk a little bit about why that's actually really unhealthy? Well, for one, I think children thrive when both their, when their parents are happy and children pick up on that. Like my daughter asked me several times, mommy, are you happy? Even though I never cried in front of her, I never let any, you know, gave her any sign that something was wrong, but she knew and she was five and she kept asking me, mommy, are you happy? So she knew something was up and they pick up on the tension in the household, even if you're not fighting in front of them. The other thing is, what are you modeling for your children in terms of what a relationship should look like? In our case, my daughter didn't even know that people that are in love hold hands. When, uh, when we were separated and she saw my best friend and his girlfriend holding hands, she asked me why. And that was so sad to me. Like, how does she not know this? You know, and then I realized it's because something we'd never modeled for her. And I'm not saying everyone has to hold hands, but you know, it's just, she had no idea what a healthy relationship looks like. Yes, oh my gosh. Well, good on both of you for doing what was best, not just for each other, but also for your child. You know, I mean, your daughter, I mean, it, you know, hope I'm wishing her to have lots of healthy, happy relationships. And she's going to be able to do that because you and your former spouse are modeling that behavior of what is acceptable and what is typical um, and figuring out, you know, what, 
what, uh, what's best for her. So thank you so much for sharing that, you know, because I've definitely heard this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's mentioned in lyrics, you know, I have friends whose parents stayed together for their kids, you know, and it's just, it's, mm -hmm. I'm a child of divorced parents and my parents co-parented well. So it's just, I think it's something to really um, talk about openly so that that myth doesn't perpetuate because there are people yeah. out there who believe like, well, this is how it needs to go, um, but there is a better way. So that being said, let's talk about some mm -hmm. of those resources that we kind of touched on earlier. So there are resources um, and ways to heal. What are some things you recommend for someone who is contemplating divorce or who's going through divorce? Okay. So I know this might sound cliche and <laughs> because everyone says, go journal, you know, but I do believe in the power of journaling because sometimes writing down our thoughts help us gain clarity. So que questions that you could journal around from a breakup or divorce could be, what did this relationship teach me? What am I feeling? Anger, grief, sadness, all of them. Like sometimes we don't even know what it is actually that we're feeling a lot of times anger is actually grief and so just to kind of get clear on that and then once you realize what you're feeling i think then it's easier to process and then the third question you could journal on would be what do i miss about the relationship and what don't i miss sometimes it becomes clear what do i miss about the relationship do i miss like my um my status as a married woman, am I missing all the wrong things? You know, or am I actually still in love with that person and I miss that person? So not that, you know, it, it just, it just helps you gain clarity. So, and so I think journaling is in, same thing. Like you just said, if somebody's thinking about staying or leaving, maybe writing down the mm -hmm. kind of like a pros and cons list. Like what is it, what will it look like for me to stay and what will it look like for me to leave and then go through what the blocks are, if leaving is the answer, what is keeping me here? What am I afraid of? And kind of working it through in your mind, like trying to come up with a plan to solve that problem. So, so the second thing you could do is, um, I'm a big believer in asking for help and looking for support. So leaning on friends and family is great. That being said, always keep in mind that family and friends have their own, I hate to say agenda, because it sounds so negative but they're bringing their own emotions into the conversation like especially family they'll give you advice based on what they think is best for you even though it's not ill intention but it's just not maybe what's best for you and so having that constant voice in your head or in your ear talking about what's what's best can hinder you from actually making your own decisions so i think it's important to also seek out a therapist or a coach who can provide you with that safe non-judgmental space to just say everything you feel and who's objective and who can just kind of guide you into the direction that you want to go because the power in, in, in coaching also and it should be in therapy too is you making your own decisions because that's what gives you the self-confidence to actually absolutely and having a full picture you know of of the landscape mm -hmm. you know i mean oftentimes before we do some of these exercises, like you've said, of journaling, before we reach out to someone like a coach or a therapist or both, you know, I mean, there's just, there's so many emotions and it is so hard to really get grounded. So I really love that you recommended journaling. I mean, so for someone who's never done journaling before, um, for someone who maybe thinks that like journaling is for kids, can you talk a little bit about like, you know, how to set the tones to, to really sit down and take it seriously and get something out of it. And also like, is there any kind of journal you recommend anything like that for this, for anyone out there who's like, Oh, I, you know, that doesn't work for me or that's for kids. Well, I think kind of figuring out what the best time of day is first of all, would, would help. Like a lot of times mornings are busy for a lot of people. You have to take the kids to school. You have to go to work. You have to get ready. Other people do really well first thing in the morning when they wake up, like just write it all down. Personally, I like to do it in the evenings when I, on the days where I don't have my daughter, where everything is calm, it's just me. It doesn't even have to be a fancy journal. I like to have a little bit of fancy journals because <laughs> it makes it more inspiring for me to open them. And then, yeah, yeah I just follow the, the questions, you know, like 
for example, one of the questions, one of the first questions I ask women is, how do you want this divorce to go? That most people mm -hmm. don't even know. Like, well, how, how do you want it to go? What do you want? What do you want in terms of settlement? What do you want in terms of the vibe of this whole thing? Like, do you want to, you know, go to court? Like, all these things. Like, what kind of divorce do you want? And then another question, for example, could be, um, how do you want to show up? Like, who do you want to be? Do you want to be angry? Or do you want to be calm and collected? You know, so things like, so anyway, my, my point is, is like when you start the journaling, think of some questions ahead of time that have been bothering, bothering you for a while, have been bothering you throughout the day that you can't, you know, figure out and then write them down and then journal about them when you have some peace and quiet, whether that's the morning or the evening or the right middle on. of the day. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I love that you said that, you know, journaling in the morning could be a really great fit depending on your schedule, journaling in the evening, but really having some quiet time where you can focus and answer the questions to the best of your ability um, and then be able to look back on them and see what's on that page and reflect on it. Um, that was wonderful. And also, you know, a fancy journal or a composition notebook. I mean, whatever works for you. If it is more likely that you're going to, you know, answer these questions and stick with it, that the journal be a certain color. If you really love the color purple or yellow, I mean, really it is about what works for you. Um, so I love that there's a lot of just room in there to figure out what what's gonna help you open that book up and do those exercises. Um, mm -hmm. So for someone who's never worked with a coach before um, and is, is contemplating divorce or going through divorce, what are some things that you would recommend that they ask their coach before they decide to work with them or how, how should they find a coach to work with? Yeah, and, and that's interesting because a lot of people actually don't really know what coaching is. They think it's kind of like therapy. Meanwhile, it's not. So just quickly, like therapy kind of dives into the past and tries to figure out why you are where you're at now. Whereas coaching takes you from where you are now and takes you towards where you want to be. So coming up with goals, whatever they may look like, and like coming up with a plan to get there. So that's more, and, and it's more of a support. So, so that's where coaching is helpful. Um, yeah, so of course, if you're looking for a coach, I think it's really important to make sure they're certified. Um, preferably through a coaching program that's ICF accredited, which is the International Coach Federation. It just means that that program has been um, looked at closely by the ICF to get the accreditation and that it teaches according to the, the guidelines and the ethics of the ICF. So I think that's really important. So you don't just go to somebody who's done a weekend course on life coaching, got the certification, and then that's it. So that's probably the first thing. Um, the other thing I recommend is getting on a discovery call with the coach that you choose, or maybe there's two or three, and really figuring out if they're a good fit for you. Because it is a partnership, just like you wouldn't choose a therapist that you don't like, probably. So it's, it has to be a good fit for both, because this is an ongoing relationship, and it's very personal. I see it as very personal. So make sure Absolutely. the vibe is Thank good. you so much for sharing that. You know. Um, it's, it really is important to find someone not only that you connect with, but that also um, is going to be able to deliver for you and has that certification, you know, someone you can trust. That's fantastic. So when you're going through divorce or you're contemplating divorce, you know, you are, you're not, you don't feel like you're standing on solid ground, right? I mean, you're in a very raw place. Um, you might not associate the word empowerment with that period of time. So how can women be feel empowered throughout this process? Yeah. Yeah. So the number one thing I would say is work on your mindset. And I know it sounds easy, but you have to work on it every day. So instead of focusing on what happened and what went wrong with the relationship and kind of living in the past, accept it that what's happening is happening and look to towards the future. Focus on what's next and what you're doing next. Don't keep going back and thinking, well, if I had done this, if I had done that. Acceptance is huge. So working on your mindset and like seeing this as a new beginning, as a second chance of life, I guess, and like seeing it as kind of exciting to, you know, go for your dreams and your desires, maybe things that you couldn't do while you were married or in the relationship. 
So then the second thing to do to feel empowered is make your own decisions. And it's something that I kind of touched on earlier is really blend everything else out, family and friends. Like I had to do the same, actually. <laughs> like I had to like block my parents out for six months just so I could make a better decision for myself and my daughter, like something that would work best for us. And so, um, yeah, so definitely making your own decisions and then focusing on becoming who you want to be. So don't just go through the action steps, the to-do list of what needs to be done. It's also who do you want to become and work towards that. So who do you envision yourself becoming? And that is just exciting. Again, like it's motivating for the future. It's not who you were. It's about what's next. Um, let's see, number three, I would say, is work on your self-confidence. This is huge. Like during divorce and after divorce, self-confidence, self-esteem goes down the drain. So in order to get your self-confidence back, do the hard things. Do the things that you've always wanted to do, but you've been scared to do because you're scared to fail or whatever it is, scared to make a fool out of yourself. Just do them because self-confidence is actually not a characteristic that we have from birth. It's a skill that we learn. And we only learn that by challenging ourselves regularly, doing the little hard things. And with time, you'll believe in yourself and you'll get that self-confidence. Those are so helpful. Thank you so much. So just to recap, you know, focusing on mindset, you know, really being intentional about who you want to be and how you want to live your life after this chapter. And then the third one, remind me. Confidence. That's what it was. Yes. Oh, Thank building you. Self-confidence. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so we still have some time for questions. If anyone has a question, please don't be shy about dropping it in the comments. I know that this is a very personal topic. So you're welcome to share a question here during this live. You're totally welcome to send Denise a DM, um, please. But it's, it's important to really um, reach out for support. And that's what we are here to provide. So um, do you have any words of encouragement you want to share for anyone who is going through this process or might be soon that maybe it's been on their mind and they haven't been able to take any of those steps yet. So the first thing that comes to mind, and it's something that doesn't come from me, it's something one of the divorce attorneys that I interviewed said mm -hmm. to me, he had been married, this was his fourth marriage. So he said to me, let me just tell you that there is life after divorce. And it just like, it was such a simple thing to say. And it seems so normal. But in that moment, it was like an eye opener for me. Because when you're in the middle of it, when you're just starting the process or thinking about leaving, you, you, you don't see anything. You don't, you don't see the future. You, you don't really have much hope. You don't know what's out there, which is that uncertainty again. And for someone to just say, there is life after the war, I'm like, oh yeah, actually there is. You know, so that is just some encouragement. There is life after the war. I'm divorced. My daughter's happy. I'm happy. You know, that. There's, there's hope on the other side. There's a life on the other side of this. And it was a huge um, opportunity for me to grow as well. I am not the same person that I was in 2019. I've become way more confident. Um, I'm happier. I, I just say, say yes now to things, you know, whereas before I was too timid and I would say no. Now it's just like... I'm all about the yes. And I'm like, you know, I try new things and go for every opportunity. So that is um, wonderful. Oh my gosh. Well, great. cheers to figuring out what that life is going to look like, mm -hmm. you know, and getting to have the, the power to shape it in the way that we want. So definitely sending out good vibes to anyone else who is thinking about a divorce or is in the process of going through divorce. Oh, um, we have a comment from Natasha. Mm -hmm. She says, um, sounds like me trying to divorce my corporate job, but too scared of the unknown. Um, I know that that's mm -hmm. a different type of situation, but do you have any, anything you want to share for Natasha? Let's see. Too scared. Well, I mean, yes. So we all like to stay in our comfort zone. So it sounds like the, the corporate job is the comfort zone here, but she wants to leave and divorce that job. So I guess the question would be, what is the I ideal outcome here? So let's just say, 
I don't know what the, the alternative is to the corporate job, but if you take both of them, the corporate and the new career maybe, if both would make her equally happy three years from now, what mm. would she choose? That's a great question. And I love that you said three years from now, you know, um, because we do need to give new things the chance to succeed. You know, it does take time and consistent effort and a plan, of mm -hmm. course. Um, but so I hope you're hearing these words, Natasha, and getting, you know, get building up that confidence to make that switch because, you know, I have some knowledge that that's something that's been on her mind for quite a long time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing, yeah. Natasha. Okay, so my last question for you, Denise, is how can we work with you? Where can we learn more about you? Okay, so I'm mostly active here on Instagram at A Beautiful Mindset Coaching. Um, I love responding to DMs, and you can so you DM me anytime. You can also email me from there. And um, yeah, in terms of working with me, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching packages for three or six months, either one. You can do bi-weekly or weekly as needed. And I'm also currently working on a group coaching program that I'm going to launch in the summer called Reclaiming You, which I'm really excited about. And um, I would also like to offer a free coaching session to anyone that's watching today. So you can just DM me the word babe. <laughs> and then I'll send you my scheduling. That is so kind of you. That. Thank you for sharing that. Um, huge <laughs> congrats on launching yeah. Reclaiming You. That sounds like a fantastic program. Um, do you have a, absolutely, you. do you have a wait list for that program or where can people make sure that they're like the first to know when it launches? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as soon as I have my, my landing page up and running, I'll have a wait list and then, yeah. I'll uh, send some emails out. And okay, post on awesome. Media. So maybe following you is the best way to stay in touch and make yeah. sure that they get that notification that the program is open. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. All right. Yes, Thank definitely. you so much, Denise, for, for, for shedding some light on this topic, sharing some encouragement, um, and sharing those journal prompts, too. That was so incredible of you. Um, thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. We are rooting for you. Have an amazing day. And thank you again, Denise. All right. Thank you, Gina. <laughs>